Let's port the oil drain backs on my 4G63 cylinder head. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna trace the holes on the head gasket from the oil drain backs. That way I can take measurements from the head and I'll mark it next to the hole. That way I can see how much I increase this cross-sectional area as I'm porting the oil drain back. Unfortunately, the batteries in this thing died and I don't have replacements. So I'm gonna measure the width, then I'm gonna lock this down, and then I'm gonna come over here to my dial calipers. 12.6 millimeters. 12.6. Now I'm gonna measure the length, 28.2 millimeters. So this is my baseline. Since this is the side where the head stud has material that helps support the head stud, I'm not going to touch this side at all. I'm only going to touch this side, this side, and this side. <laughs> As you can see, there's these big ledges on the top of the oil drain backs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the taper on the outside wall and try and blend it up to the top a little bit. I'm gonna clean up these edges over here and add some roundness to them so oil can drain down easier. So I do need to pay attention to the corners because these are the runners right here and I do not want to weaken the walls to the runners, but I do need to leave a little bit of material here on both sides to not take away any girth from the runner. So as we can see, I've removed some of the taper and it opens up as it comes here. Now the length is low, no longer tapered either and it opens up more. So with this one, as you can see, it is right up against the runner. So I'm not going to touch this side at all, but I am going to open up here and I'm going to open it up here as well. So I'm gonna measure the widest part of the taper. We'll go ahead and lock this off. And then I'll come over here, 20 millimeters. And then now I'll drop it down and I'll measure the tightest part of the taper, which is 13 and a half millimeters. And I need to equal those out. And I'll do the top to the upper half. The upper half of the length is 32.18, and then down in the hole is 23 millimeters. <laughs> so down in here, we're almost at 17 millimeters, so we've gotten rid of the majority of the taper to almost match the 20 millimeters of width up top here. So the length is 26.4 millimeters, so we opened it up to about 4 millimeters, and we're getting closer to our 32. So to finish it off, I took my pencil grinder and sanding roll and I smoothed out each port I could reach up to 240 grit. So out of the nine ports I actually did, I opened up about six of them. So let's calculate how much I increased the cross-sectional area by. So I added up all the cross-sectional areas before I ported and after I ported. Now let's calculate how much percentage gain we got. Okay, so starting value 0 0.94953, final value 2.0. 7923. So we had an increase of 194% across the oil drain backs. 194% is definitely huge and will help the crankcase system breathe better on this next engine build. To simply break it down, the crankcase pressure and the oil draining from the head fight each other in these oil drain backs. As oil is getting sent into the head to lubricate the head, it's trying to drain down the drain backs and the crankcase pressure from the lower crankcase assembly is trying to come up the drain backs and go out your PCB system on your valve cover. I'll definitely keep you guys updated on how my catch can system is performing after porting these oil drain backs here in the near future. If you like this type of experimental stuff, make sure you drop a like on the video, subscribe and hit that notification bell for future videos. Y'all have a good one now. Peace out.